Metroid Dread. Sometimes a game comes along. Every so many years, sometimes it takes decades, and it reminds you of why you fell in love with video games to begin with. Metroid Dread on the Nintendo Switch is the ultimate modern game for retro gamers. The Metroidvania style, the twist and turns, the backtracking, the ass kicking, the disappointment. Everything we've come to love about the Metroid series and Metroidvania style games resides here. Today, Gotji takes a final look at Metroid Dread on the Nintendo Switch. You got the outsiders, Kevin Nash. Scott Hall. And if you get a chance, you need to be watching Gaming Off the Grid. Don't miss it, ever. We literally just finished the epic experience that was Metroid Dread last yes, night. We did, finally. And I know we're kind of late to the party yeah. because people beat it immediately. We just didn't have the time to do it. Yeah. So it took us a week, and that's pretty quick for us. Yeah, because I mean, we were just chipping away at it in between episodes and everything else. But we wanted to talk about, you know, there's tons of full reviews out there, but the way this game made us feel, we really wanted to hone in on that. So this isn't necessarily a full-on review. It's kind of our final look with the cameras rolling of the experience that Metroid Dread gave us on the Nintendo Switch, and it was an epic one. Oh, it was so cool, because obviously Metroid Dread is a one-player game, but we made it a two-player experience, yeah. and I think that kind of made it more fun. Yeah, well, it was, yeah, we, somebody's kind of thinking about the map while the other person's just playing, and, and those type of things, which made it a great experience, but to circle back, this game was developed by Mercury Steam, and yes. that may sound kind of familiar to you, because that was the team that did Samus Returns on the 3DS. The 3DS. Did a fantastic job, but this is kind of next level, and it's the first a Metroidvania or side-scrolling Metroid game, I think, in like 15 plus years. Because Samus Returns is basically a remake of the second one. Yeah. You know? So, I mean, yeah, there was a new game, but as far as one that is a different story, uh, it, it was, it's been a long time coming. And, you know, a lot of people are waiting with bated breath for Metroid Prime 4. Oh, yes. And this may be, at least to me, when it first got announced, I was excited, huge Metroid fan, but I kind of felt like, is that Nintendo just kind of letting us wet our whistle, keep the Metroid name kind of relevant while they're finishing Metroid Prime? I guess I wasn't certain that it was going to land as a mainline release. Yeah, I, I thought they were just going to put in something out just to kind of get people yeah. excited, you know? I mean, so I was kind of setting myself up like, I'm going to like it because it's a Metroid game, but I had no idea what I was in for. Let's talk about gameplay. So the first time we, we played this was live on stream, mm -hmm. and we put it in, we got off work, and just before the game even starts, the freaking, the way it starts with that music and yep. like... I was like, it's like that swelling heartbeat type yeah. deal. I was like, this is a perfect October game. This is going to be great. And from like probably 30 minutes of starting it, I could not stop thinking about Metroid till we beat it. Yeah. Literally, I wanted to find everything. I wanted to explore and get all the items. I wanted to beat it. It's a game that I was addicted to immediately. I, I totally agree. And from a gameplay standpoint, I mean, this has so much to offer. You know, the there, there's new mechanics, so the game feels refreshed and vibrant and new, but it doesn't forget about its heritage yes. and what has made the Metroid franchise. So from a power-up standpoint, you got a lot of the familiar faces, 28 some power-ups, but I believe there's two new ones, the Phantom Cloak and uh, the good old Pulse Radar. The Pulse Radar, which, dude, the Pulse Radar comes in clutch when you're trying to find those hidden items. Yeah. Because you can scan a room and it just, oh, there's some breakable blocks. And just from a control standpoint, the game is, is tight. It's precise. It's complex because there's so many different yes. power-ups. And when I say power-ups, I'm talking about the different morph ball deals, the different suits, the different beams you can get. There's so many All in. Yeah. There's 28 variants or variables there, roughly 20. It might be a couple more, but I think that's how many there were. But the game is fluid. There wasn't one time, like when, when you mess something up, it's your fault you hit the wrong button or, or whatever, but there's so many button combos there, to remember. That's the tough part about this game. 
I think is remembering how to do certain abilities and becoming an expert on that. So like there'd be a lot of times we're playing and I'm like, oh, how do I do this? I forgot, which is nice is you can pause it. You can go into your abilities and relearn how to. So that's kind of nice if yeah. you forget because there is so many of them and, and you need all the abilities to do certain things. For sure, for sure. And it, it traditional Metroidvania kind of drags you back and forth. You know, you go get to a different planet and and then you got to go back and use a new power up that you got on a different planet to go back to that you know other planet to unlock something. And there's elevators and short. It's. The game just when you play it gets deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper and you're like it's a giant holy puzzle. crap. Nine different planets total. Not going to read them all off, but there's so much variety. You know, you start off early in the game and you're kind of almost like in a barren area and as you go on the world just becomes so much more vibrant. There's just so much to see, so much to do. And we're talking about the gameplay. The controls are tight. The game is fluid. The only thing I, I would say is a little bit of a, a hitch in the giddy up is when you're going from planet to planet. Ooh, it does take a while. It, it, like they disguise it so you don't think it's load times, but it's load times. You're traveling or in the elevator for and you know a little while. It's, it does take like a little bit longer than I expected, and that's every time you yeah. travel. Especially, I feel like when you're on that train. Oh, the whatever. train is yeah. the longest for some reason. Yeah. But then it's cool when you pull up and it's raining on the next planet yeah. and you're like, dude, this looks freaking sweet. So you kind of look past that. What I really like about Metroid Dread is you go through the game and obviously you get stronger and you build up your abilities and you find all these upgrades. But the bad guys also evolve with you. Yeah. So you get uh, these new upgrades and you're like, I'm freaking OP. And you get to this new area and you're not. The bad guys, there's new bad guys that are harder. But then when you go back to the earlier planets with your upgrades, oh, then yeah. you're, you just crush then ass. You're just, <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's, it has this nice feeling of like, okay, these are the harder planets. These are the easier planets, but only if I have certain things. It's it's really cool in that aspect. Yeah, and, and then I would say up until the very last piece of the game where you're just so powered up, you're OP. Once you get that screw attack, from that point forward, oh. most all bad guys well, are, are... The screw attack is badass when you're just going through the levels, but it's not as effective against bosses. Yeah, true. So it is nice because then you can you can get places faster with it, but... Which is a beautiful segue to talk about the freaking boss battles in this oh game. Oh my god. So, but prior to boss battles, great enemy variety. You know, you go from one room and go back, they do regenerate. Yeah. Some people will find that annoying, but overall, great enemy design. The boss battles are freaking incredible. Some kind of remind me of Contra in a way. Yes, some of them had a very Contra vibe. The, the, a some of them had like a shmup vibe. Yeah. I remember every time we would get to a boss, I would just be like, holy crap, this boss fight is so freaking cool. And I, every time we would get to a new boss fight, I'd be like, dude, this is now my favorite boss fight in the game. Like that's how good mm -hmm. they were. And what's what's weird is, so there's boss fights, and then there's also these Emmy fights, these yeah. robots that you're fighting that so are kind of bosses, but it's really cool. Yeah, and I don't know if it's E-M-M-I or Emmy, but we call them Emmy, so that's what we're gonna roll with. It's this little character here, and what is there, seven of them? Seven of them. Scattered around, and it does take a little bit of time uh, to learn how to counter them, and it's never easy, but it's especially difficult underwater, but once you start getting that counter mechanism down, which has got a fairly steep learning curve, I feel like, it really kind of opens the game up because then you start using it on bosses and, and, and things like that. It's hot, dude. So we beat it yesterday. I want to play it again already. Yeah. Like, I don't even want to stop having Metro Dread in my life, even though I beat it, which we did on Lock Hard Mode. So yeah. maybe that's what we play next. So the game plays sound, great boss fights. It's just no complaints, really, with the exception of a little bit of loading issues. The graphics. Okay. So I really like the graphics and the style and just the way it looked. I mean, it's not, they're not doing anything revolutionary. They're, they're not doing anything freaking like, oh my God, that's gorgeous. We were also playing it on CRT. So <laughs> yeah. it, I think the game is 60 frames per second, Yeah. but we're playing it on CRT. So, but from our perspective, it looked great Yeah. and it played great. And I loved the attention to detail in the background. Yeah. Like, You'd be freaking in a level and there'd be like windows and then there'd be stuff flying behind the window or it's raining. A lot of attention to detail went into like the the graphics and like the level design and all yeah, that stuff. And, and I've never really personally cared a ton about graphics. I like them when they're good. They don't bother me if they're super bad as long as one thing is present. And that is, do the graphics serve the game well? Is the game not held back because of graphics? The graphics serve this game perfectly. Oh, it does yeah. everything you needed them to do. There's probably some tech junkie out there that's like, ooh, shoot it on this. 
this game looks incredible. You will enjoy it. They will not hinder your experience whatsoever. They did a fine it's, job. It's a beautiful game. And yeah. I love how some of the colors and some of the bad guys and the way, like, when you go in certain areas, like when you're fighting the Emmys, it's like this gray, yeah. kind of like saturated tone. It's just so cool. Yeah, they, they nailed it. The sound, not going to spend a ton of time there with the exception of it's great. Uh, they they did a great job. Uh, we had the stereo in here cranked, very bassy. Yes. Um, it, it just everything breathes in harmony in this game, and the sound is no different. Now let's talk about something that I think is really my whole takeaway from from this whole game. As I kind of give it my final look and your final look, is the difficulty. Yeah. I feel like this game is a modern game for the OG retro gamers. Yes, because this game is not afraid to freaking kick you in the ass and say, game over, game over, yeah. game over, <laughs> try again, try again. How you doing? And I, and I feel like if you're just a casual modern gamer, and no offense if you are, but you probably won't finish this game. I'm just being honest. Like, I feel like it will kick you on your ass so many times that you'll probably give up. I know that sounds kind of mean, but this is a hard, new style retro. Yeah, game, you know. Yeah, and I I think folks that grew up and cut their teeth on Super Metroid and uh, NES, Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis era, I think you'll find the difficulty welcoming. I yes. think you will. It'll bring you back. It will remind you in a weird sort of way of why you love video games. And we have a YouTube channel. I never forgot why I love video games, but sometimes a game comes around that re-emphasizes that. Yes. And you go to work and it's all you can think about. You get up to pee in the middle of the night. It's all you can think about. We're texting throughout the day, bro, we got to play some Metroid yeah, we gotta Dread. Find the next freaking missile upgrade or yeah. the next power up. And just all day just kind of going through the map in my head like, dude, did we go all these places? Retro gamers who maybe have fallen out of love with gaming, this game is for you. Yes. I don't know how this game, I know it's off to a good start in sales. To your point, I think there's a high barrier of entry here for modern gamers, so I don't know how welcoming it is. But I think that's a good thing. Some folks that are new in gaming, you kind of need to get your ass kicked once in a while. It, yeah. it makes you, this was a game, when you beat it, you're like, I am a badass. Yeah, dude, it's freaking tough. And the game is kind of like, so it's super tough in some moments, and then you can go a long time without dying, so you're like, oh, maybe I'm just getting better, or... So it has this, like, nice, where yeah. it's not just always hard, always hard. It's, yeah. it, it, like, breathes a little bit, and then when you... Especially the boss fights and, like, the different waves, and you kind of... It's just like when you're playing Contra. you got to learn what the boss does before you can be good at it, you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, if you're really good, you could probably get through it on your first try, but... It's all about learning and adapting and patterns. Like patterns. Learn Pattern. the patterns, live the patterns. Yeah, pattern recognition is so important. Dude, I know I keep saying it, but this game is so freaking badass, and I think that this might be the best Switch game ever made. I don't think that's a stretch. On the difficulty standpoint, this game is like, what when I say it's the perfect modern retro game, this game isn't super long. It's probably if you were really, really dialed in. Um, I'm sure there's people out there who have speed run it, but I would say if you're you're a pretty decent gamer, you're gonna plow through the game in four to seven hours. Yeah. Um, so it's not super lengthy, but this game makes you earn it. Where some games that are coming out on the modern scene are 150 to 200 hour games, and you don't really have to earn it. You just gotta put the time in. Exactly. Yeah. This game, you have to earn everything you get and that's we've griped about that in modern games before there's 150 hour games but it's like a movie it's an interactive which, movie which those are fine those they are, are those are fun sometimes but you're not walking away feeling from uncharted 4 feeling the way like, you the way you felt like you're the baddest ass on the block like you feel when you beat Dude, this i will say talking about badasses samus is samus aaron is a freaking Bad is there's so many times, so many cutscenes where she would do all these cool things, and I'm just like, you are a bad yeah. ass. Makes me want to uh, get good with her in Smash, but I'm not very good at Smash, to, just in general. See Beard versus Beard if you want any proof <laughs> of that. But yeah, 28 power ups, nine planets, Metroidvania that will twist your freaking head in knots. What are your final thoughts on Metroid Dread for the Nintendo Switch? It is 
freaking incredible. I already said it, but I think it's the best Switch game that has come out yet. And I know Mario Odyssey is incredible, but I think Odyssey falls into the same category of anyone can beat it. You just have to put the time in. And I, that's not a bad thing. It's a Mario game, and it, I loved Odyssey when yeah. it came out. But this, man, this is I got so many game overs, but I wanted to keep going. And then what? what's really cool about Metroid Dread is you get to areas where you're stuck, and you're like, I don't know what to do, where to go. You're wandering around. I think on stream we wandered around for two hours, didn't find anything. <laughs> yeah. And then all of a sudden you find that one thing and it opens the map up again. Yep. That happens multiple times. And this is such a phenomenal game. And I will say this is the first Metroid game I've ever beaten. So I'm kind of new to the whole series. And this game has awakened me to want to play all of them. Yeah. You know what? Like this game has inspired me to dig deep into Metroid. That's how good it is. Yeah. I... Uh... I'm a huge Super Metroid fan. I'm a big fan of uh, pretty much all things Metroid. I own Samus Returns. Haven't beat that one, but I, I've played the the Game Boy Advance and DS games, Metroid Fusion, etc. I've played the Prime games. I always try to not be a prisoner of the moment and make and like put my stake in the ground too early. But as it sits right now, I could be a prisoner in the moment. Super Metroid is one of my favorite games ever made. And I think I like Metroid Dread more. Damn. I'm going to go back. I'm going to beat Super Metroid here in the next month or so just to revisit it. But this game did everything and then some that I could have possibly expected. I, did, I was excited for it, but I was I did not expect to, to love it so freaking much. And I think coming out of... I mean, we just beat yesterday, so it's still fresh. And I think if you follow us on social media, you already know where I'm going with this, but I think this is my game of the year. Like, that's how good it is. Right now, there's nothing close for me. No. I mean, like, this... It's phenomenal. Yeah. I, we don't even collect Amiibos, and I had to get the freaking Amiibo set. Like, like we, you bought that immediately. Yeah. You were like, I, I this. This game is just... It is Nintendo's way of smiling upon the original Nintendo fans. I really feel that way. I, I just... It was just such... An awesome moment, such an awesome game. If you're a retro gamer, it's a must play. Yes. If you're new to the Metroid series, but you're a retro gamer trying to backtrack and learn, it's an awesome way to introduce yourself to Metroid. Modern casuals, you're gonna get your ass beat, but if you want that challenge, step up to the plate. I think you'll like and the game if you know if you know what you're getting into. Yeah. It's, it's a lot of fun. It's difficult and it's fun. And what's really cool is we played it two player. So we took turns, you know, every once in a while. And during some boss fights, it was it was really cool because we we would both be playing it and we'd be dying at different parts. And then it'd be like, dude, you're really good at this part. I'm really good at this part. So why don't we just like you do the first part and then I'll do the second part. And we were fucking flying through bosses yeah. just because we, we figured out who was better at what part. Yeah, I mean, even the final boss, I you had phase one down. Like in phase three is very similar to phase one. But you couldn't figure out phase two, no. and I was struggling on phase one. So we're like, "Hey, let's uh, let's divide and conquer." And literally, here. the first time we tried yeah. that method, we beat it. Which, yeah, uh, the perks of having a two-man channel, yeah. I guess. So, blown away, freaking blown away. I know this isn't a full, super deep, detailed review, but this game, man, it hit. It, it really hit. It freaking relit a yep. fire in me, which is awesome. And and we don't normally do videos about new games no like reviews and so this is that's how good this game yeah. is we only really talk about the things that we love yeah and, and that's we, metro dread yeah. and beer we yeah. love beer so let's talk about it yeah this you is, just picked this up recently yeah all shucks by barn town this is a kettle sour with raspberry citrus punch drink mix and marshmallow what do you think it's chunky i don't know if you guys can see the cloudiness of that glass like the stuff rolling around maybe even a little something on the bottom there um, Barn Town just always delivers. Um, I don't know how this even gets called beer. It tastes like it tastes like juice. Yeah, juice, fruit punch. Um, it is a sour. Um, there is a little bit of a pucker on the finish, but, but not, not much. No, not much. I think the marshmallow really helps sweeten it yeah. and smooth it out. This is this is really good, and it's a uh, it's a really unique one because a lot of their like kettle sours are based on like things that I've already had before. Yeah, like foods or drinks or something like that. I've never had like a a raspberry marshmallow drink. Or, yeah, yeah. But it, it it blends so well and it's so tasty. Yeah. So smooth. I mean, Barn Town's incredible. They just do crazy stuff. They and, do. And I love them for it. 
and this one's really good. <laughs> oh shucks. Yeah. Oh shucks. I'm gonna have to have another one after this. But uh, nonetheless, guys, Metroid Dread, the ultimate modern game for retro gamers. Bring your freaking lunch to work the day you're gonna play this game yeah. because it is gonna run you through the grinder. I mean, it's not. There's definitely harder retro games, but what I'm saying is the difficulty reminds me of that era. Yes. You're gonna have to freaking Buckle bust. Up some freaking ass in this game to get through it and it's a ton of fun and it really brings metroid to the forefront and what's unique is what i initially thought was a way to placate the masses as we're waiting for metroid prime 4 i think this has set the bar so high that if metroid prime 4 isn't an absolute banger it's going to be a letdown yeah which sucks because we've been waiting for that game for years but I'm curious about what you guys think of Metroid Dread. If you guys have played it, if you guys have beat it, what are your thoughts? What are your final impressions? Do you think it's game of the year worthy? Because I definitely do. And what's crazy, dude, I don't want to give any spoilers away, but we ended the game with only 53% of the items. Yeah, tons of missiles we could have still got. There's so much hidden stuff. Like, that's... Yeah. Ah, man, and I just, I'm like a completionist, like in my heart so like I once you beat the game I wanted to go back and find everything yeah <laughs> even yeah. though there's no point it's already over you still might you never know yeah, probably still it'll be will. fun but nonetheless guys make sure you let us know how did this game make you feel Metroid Dread oh yeah we'll see you next time right here on Gaming Off The Grid alright old toast this freaking chunky boy It's like we're drinking Metroid blood. Oh yeah. It's like alien blood, dude. <laughs>